one of the worst insects you can possibly get in soybeans is called the soybean aphid. You know, we didn't even have these in our country until uh, around the year 2000 or so, and it was, I think, 2004 when we had the first really big outbreak in our country. Since then, unfortunately, like on our own farm, we've treated every single year. I do not like spraying for aphids, but the good news here is insecticide prices have come way down, so it's much more economical than it used to be. Well, what I don't like about aphids is that they can reproduce so quickly. And when you have an aphid outbreak in your field, that's one of the tough things is, okay, there are a few aphids that I see, but then you go back two days later and the field is infested. And you say, what, how did this happen? There were only three or four aphids per plant. Yes, there may have only been three or four aphids per plant, but then all of a sudden each aphid has so many little babies. And then those aphids within a couple of days are producing more aphids and, and it can just exponentially well, explode they, in your field. Yeah, they say that the ideal temperature is 77 degrees and at 77 degrees you're going to see the numbers double in less than one day. But the temperature is the real key. If you have temperature extremes, let's say you've got several hundred degree days or several 50 or 45 degree days, you know, that really slows down that overall reproduction. So the temperature is the whole key. A lot of people also ask about rain and say, oh, well rain washes them off the plant. Well, that may be, and rain might kill some of the aphids, but it doesn't slow them down all that much. So you still have to keep scouting and, and keep an eye on what those aphid numbers are. All right, and with a tiny little thing like an aphid, you think, well, how can that really cause that much yield damage? And, and there's so many different ways that aphids can hurt you. Uh, when we think about them, I like to remember they are piercing, sucking insects. So aphids will actually pierce into the plant, suck the juice out of the plant, and, and when they do that, they're opening up a wound on the plant. And so not only are you gonna have, uh, hey, my plant is leaking out all these fluids, I'm losing all these fluids, losing all this energy, but also disease is getting into my plant. Many times on, on our farm, we've seen more incidents of charcoal root rot anytime that we've had aphids. Uh, and we can just track it to the field that, wow, this field, uh, we got more aphids before we were able to find them and get out and get it treated. Now we see some charcoal root rot in that particular area of that particular field. So not just the yield loss from the feeding of the aphids, I'm concerned also about the disease that is going to enter in through those wounds. All right, what's the right threshold? Well, I'll tell you what the right threshold is not. It's not 250 aphids per plant. What we're looking for is a couple of things. Number one, how many bugs do we have? And number two, at what stage of growth are we at? So at R1, for example, first flower, that's a lot more critical than if you're at R6, okay, right at the very tail end of the season. In other words, we could stand more bugs at the end of the season. But here's the whole thing. There are a lot of people that talk about this 250 number. That number was developed back, I believe it was 2004, and what that really stems from is a much lower price of soybeans than what we have today, a much higher cost of insecticide treatment, and a much lower yield than we have today. And, so, and also, Brian, it, it was from, hey, we've got this new bug, guys are really asking a lot of questions, and we need something simple so we can say, look, here's a number, go for that, as soon as you see that, treat. And now everybody could kind of rally around one thing and all right, this is going to be a lot easier. And, and it's tough when you've got something new to say, boy, I really don't know how much yield loss there's going to be at various stages. Uh, I don't know, you know, late in the season, if we, it's still a big deal, how early in the season may we have to go? Because sometimes aphids come a month earlier than other years, depending on what the weather is and everything else. So there's a lot of variables there. And I get that, hey, having one number like 250 to rally around okay. has some benefits, but, but it can definitely be misleading in that we haven't run the economics and they do change during the year with the price of the crop and also the treatment, uh, but then during the time of year, uh, it really matters looking at how much yield you okay, could Okay, so looking lose. at today's economics, on our farm, I'd say the number's five or 10. That's it, five or 10 aphids per plant, and I'm pulling the trigger. Because right away, we know that, hey, if they were figuring uh, you know, $8 cost for insecticide and five to $8 cost for application, that's craziness. Okay, today the cost for a full rate of insecticides is two bucks, and it costs me zero to apply because I'm already out there spraying fertilizer, foliar fertilizer, and fungicide. My point is, it's very, very inexpensive to do this. I'm pulling the trigger real early based partly on experience in our own operation. 
We've worked with thousands of farmers around the country. I know 250 is wrong. You have to spray much earlier than that because the economics are whole different. Soybean aphids are certainly one of the worst problem pests you can get out in your soybean fields, but weeds are very important to keep under control as well. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week?